Pliocene device here is a deer hair collared uh, olive bumble. Oh, we'll get to tying this. It's, it's a really good um, top dropper fly at olive time. It works at other times, particularly at olive time. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's a sort of midway between a, a bumble and, and a stimulator or a muddler. Um, and you can add a tiny bit of floatant to the hair if you want during the hatch, but it's probably got a little bit more buoyancy than uh, a normal bumble due to this deer hair color, uh, uh, which kind of pushes through like a, an emerger. Um, and at the same point in time, it's not sort of really up on top, like, like a more buoyant, like a muddler. So you're normally fishing these flies on um, fast or slow intermediate lines. And at various times during the hatch, the fish seem to switch from pulling the flies, you know, subsurface to just taking them right in the surface film. And uh, that's where this one can be, you know, really effective. So um, a good bob or top dropper fly worth having um, with whichever, whichever shade of olive you want in the body and whatever rib you want. Like, you know, it could be a gold rib. Could be a red rib, orange rib, or chartreuse rib. Um, whatever works on your your fishery, you know the lock that you're you're fishing on. So um, yeah, let's get to to tying one of these. Fulling mill, short shank special, size ten. So it's a shank length, more similar to a uh, twelve, but. A good white gap for for a bumble. So take your tread in right behind the eye and run it down the body. I tend to go at least half ways, but it's up to yourself really. <clears throat> and snip that off. And then let's bring your tread back up, touch and turns. And then just come back just one or two turns from the eye. You just leave it a small bit of space, but not a whole lot. Okay, next. Take some, some deer hair. Maybe elk hair probably work as well. And just take a nice pinch. That's going to form the color of your fly. This is a nice uh, dyed brown. Or you could use um, some, some, some variants. I like to use a uh, kind of a rusty brown one. <clears throat> it's a uh, number twelve from from Hens. It's, it's a little bit more of a, a rusty brown, more towards a claret than this one. So <clears throat> get your get your, your comb comb out any under for any fluffy bits. Let's just clear everything out. Then get your stacker <clears throat> and put all your hair into your, your stacker and bang your stacker on the table. And then tilt it to the side. Your tips should be lined up like this. And again, just shake out any any fibers that might be too short, just 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 maybe run your finger through it. Just trying to avoid too much mess with this deer hair here. And you'd be left with something like that. So your length is roughly the length of the body. So you reverse it. Just take your time. And keep it pinched. And check your length again. And then come in. And what I do is I kind of Hold it a little bit loose and I jag the thread and you can see what's happening there. It's making its way all around the hook. And give another loose turn. And another slightly tighter. And now gradually start to get tighter. And the eye of your hook is is in here. Okay. And ideally you know, keep that thread fairly close to the back of the eye at this stage. And start working your way back down the body. OK. 
Okay. Pull these forward again. I just moved them back just to give you an idea that the location of the of the eye. So trap them down as best you can and come in. You can put a slight taper on your do your hair but basically you're just going around trimming it off here. Okay, now it's, it's up to you really whether you want to go for sort of a longer taper along the body or whether you want to trim it really close up to this. In one sense it doesn't matter a whole lot because you're going to be covering all this with bobbing and hackles and so on. Okay, I'm just, now that I can get a better view, I'm just trimming it down a little bit more than, than it was, just a bit shorter. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. And then just cover it all up. So I'm going to go right the ways down this time. Let's come back up. So you might have to go down over it. Bit just to basically just tidy it up, okay. And as I say, it's up to you really. If you're how worried you are about the, the shape of the the body, so I'm kind of happy enough with that for now. And you get your tail, so it's golden pheasant crest. Just pull off a feather. It's not dyed, it's just a natural colour. Um, I normally like to remove some of that the fluff from the base of it. And just you're looking at well, my preference is for something that's slightly shorter than the body length. I generally don't have really long tails on my, my bumbles, but again you can have yours longer. And come in and just snip that off. And the tread down it. On your way back down then, catch in your ribs. So, so I'm going to use the Tommy. You can use Glow Bright as well. This is the uh, Tommy number 31. And cut off a longish length. Bring it around your tread. And pull your two strands together. And then just drop them in as you go down. Okay, if you want to just hold your tail in place. Friends. How far down there you want to go really and there you go so then I'm going to add a bit of wax to the tread like so and then the dubbing with the chartreuse rib um, I tend to go with the light olive <coughs> There now, not causing the problem. So get a few twists on it. And just anchor. Once it's in place, it's generally easy enough to work with. There's way too much there already, so I'm going to remove a little bit of that straight off the bat. And we start bringing that forward. Not to drop your deer hair in. So I'm just being a bit careful as to that that area there. Right, so I did just leave just a little tiny space there for where you're going to catch in your hackle. So I'm going to use a a light to medium olive hackle. It's, it's not too dark. Probably uh, close enough to a light on it. And again, touch of wax here because I don't have a lot of room 
and I want to make sure I get some some grip on this this tip of the hackle here. So bring that in and catch it in. A couple of turns, check it's secure. Just need to tighten up my vise here and start hammering it down. It's fairly close turns because it is a bumble and we're only using one hackle as opposed to normally with bumbles you'd be inclined to use two hackles. And get your rib and get the two strands and just twist them into a bit of a rope and then lock in your lock in your um, hackle there. And start bringing your your rib forward. And you get about three to four turns, and to get you up in front of your hackle there, and then just give it two turns behind and in front, and that's it, locked in. So you can trim away your waist now. Get another fly out of this hackle, probably more than one. You get two anyway, and I just my voice here just to get in so what you want to do I normally get the both strands together but when you're holding your strands you just run your scissors down so that you're not going to cut anything else except your except your rib material so after doing all that you don't want to make a mess of anything that's for sure so now I'm going to start pushing these back now you could use the top of a pen or something similar I'm just going to use my fingers and just bring the thread forward in front Okay, and just take your time, and once you get them all back, start to build up a little tread dam, which is going to be the head of your fly, and also, as I said, going to act as a dam to keep the hackle in position. So, there you go, you get the idea. Now, the more tread you build up on it, the more it's inclined to sit down. So. The effect is kind of up to you, really. Um, what I'd normally do is give it like seven or eight turns up against it and then stop and have a look. And then if I'm not happy, I go again. And as I'm getting close to the shape I want, I might go down to, you know, five turns or three turns. Fairly happy with that now. Okay, so it's time to give it a whip, a whip finish. Let's get your whip finish tool. Yeah, just want to keep pressure on your tread, and you're trying to hold everything out of the way as well. So. So you can either lacquer it before or after. I'm just going to lacquer it after I trim off here now. So get your clear lacquer. <laughs> and I'm going to pull everything back. And I'm just going to add a drop here. I'm going to hold it there for a second because the lacquer is going to soak down into the deer hair a bit. That's going to help keep it in position. If you were using super glue, it'd probably hold it even more if that's what you wanted. Okay, then I'm going to turn the vise upside down and I'm going to push this up so that when I'm putting this lacquer on it, it'll run away from the eye and that will help um, make sure the eye isn't getting blocked. Okay, and also. It's going to help to um, keep the lacquer running down into the um, materials a little bit. Okay. So um, that's it then, and all you need to do then is give it another few coats of lacquer, or if you want to add some 
UV resin when the, the lacquer dries a bit. And again, if you are, hold your materials in place, add your drop or two, and then that will again help keep the shape a little bit for you if you, if you want. So I've left that lacquer dry in now. And I suppose just to other the finishing touches just to show you. It's coming in now, let's hold that out of the way. Coming in my UV resin. Hold those in place. Give it a shot of the UV lamp. And you can see um, bits of the rib showing through actually there. And also you can um, you can see the way it's it's starting to sit down a little bit more. So um, just to show you that, and again, I'll have to add a little bit of resin underneath. So use a use a bodkin or have your resin brush tapered to point. Just build this up a small bit more. Have it looking nice. And then just set that then. And there you have the, the finished right. 